everybody, Trash here, and today we're going to talk about tools you should be using if you're a TypeScript developer in 2023, or really even beyond. But anyways, let's jump in and let's see what we got here. So the first one I want to showcase here is Total TypeScript, um, and this one's going to be by Matt Pocock. So let's go ahead and enable this. Um, it's important to note that I'm using VS Code, um, so you can just have to you can just go to the extensions tab here and just type in Total TypeScript. So I already have this installed, but I'm going to enable it. The cool thing here is that it actually, when you do enable it or install it, it's going to ask you, would you call yourself a TypeScript beginner? And if you are, we'll show you tips that are helpful for when you're first learning TypeScript. So let's kind of just, we'll just hit yes here and we'll kind of show you what that means. Um, but let's go ahead and just see what this looks like. So we have it enabled now. Um, and if we look here, we kind of see... Um, these little blue squiggles here. And what these blue squiggles are going to do, um, they pretty much just explain things to you. Um, so we can see here, it just says passing types to other types. Uh, I'm not going to read into it, but it, it's kind of just like a, an inline glossary for like terms you don't actually understand. So it's great. So if I did something like, let's just say we did interface foo, and let's just say a string. And then I did like type bar equals key of foo, right? We're gonna see that we get another blue squiggle here and it's gonna say key of. Key of operator takes a type and returns a union of its keys, right? Um, and then basically you're gonna see the same thing with these blue squiggles. So this is like amazing. And here you can pretty much say mark as learned. And if you mark it as learned, you're never gonna see these squiggles again. So if I don't really care about like simple type annotations um, or key of, I can do mark as learned here and so forth and so on. So you kind of get the picture here. So now those blue squiggles go away. And the next time you will, you'll see them is if it's for some kind of keyword that you've never seen before. So that's awesome. Now this is gonna lead me into my, probably my favorite VS Code extension. And I believe it's called, I think I have it typed in here already, VS Code two slash queries. And all that really does is just, um, let's just imagine a scenario. Uh, actually, we have an example here. If I wanted to know what this type is, I have to use my mouse uh, and hover over it to kind of see what the type is, right? So imagine me not even having to do that. So you may have seen the syntax where it's kind of like a comment with the caret and question mark. Um, and then it, basically what will happen is it will output um, the type in line. This is probably not a great example because this type is pretty gnarly, but let's imagine we did something like this. Let's just say type baz uh, equals foo, and then we'll just say like, hey, we want to access it at A, right? Um, and then if we did use this plugin, we'll see, we should see the type baz equals string. And then you can imagine if I made a number, um, you can see it pretty much update real time. But this is kind of like a contrived case. You can imagine you had some more complex type um, and you wanted to debug them live. You, do, you don't want to really keep moving your mouse to hover over it to see if it's correct or not. So this is like a way for you to kind of avoid using your mouse and just seeing the types in line. This is super great, super productive. And if you ever use the TypeScript Playground, um, this is actually built into it. So that's amazing. All right, now let me meet you with my second favorite VS Code plugin. And this one's going to be called like Pretty Errors or something. Let me see, I have it installed. This one's called Pretty TypeScript Errors. Um, no need to write this down. I'm gonna have these all in the comments, so check it out. But let me show you a great example. Let me show you a classic example where TypeScript sucks to give us um, well-formatted errors. And let's, I think a classic example would be event handlers in React. So for instance, let's do this. Let's just say button um, on click. And here's a classic case. We'll just name this handle click. Thank you, Copilot. And we'll just say const handle click. Uh, I don't think it really needs to be an async function, whatever. Well, let's just name this event because whatever, doesn't matter. Now I'm gonna see this type error. Um, we'll still, we'll see like this long, like plain text error that doesn't really look great. It's kind of hard to follow, especially when you get, as you get more complex errors, they're gonna get even longer. But so here's what you typically would see with a TypeScript error. But if you scroll down, you now see this nice little UI here. So this is the where the prettier or the pretty TypeScript error plugin comes in. Um, and it gives you a nice presentable uh, kind of TypeScript error that you can actually read and follow reasonably. So it's just pretty much saying like, look, you have this event. It's not assignable to this type. This is the type you should be using, right? Another quick example of this where it 
where you can see uh, more insane examples would be something like probably this. Let's delete this thing. We're gonna get this crazy type error that I can't even read. Pro tip, typically when you get long TypeScript errors, you just have to scroll to the bottom of it because it's a lot of fluff that you don't care about at the top. But anyways, you can see how this is the original state. And then now you can see this is where the plugin comes in and kind of guides you and kind of just organizes the error for you to where you can actually debug properly. So awesome. I would recommend hands down that you should install this and save your future self from headaches. Cool, all right, next tool that is actually outside of VS Code. Um, if you ever use TypeScript Playground, you know when you try to copy and paste the URL to someone, it gives you like the longest URL ever. So if I see, like, look at this, like, look how, look how ridiculous this thing is. This thing is crazy long. So check out tsplay.dev. Um, so if I copy and paste this, throw it in here, it's basically a URL shortener. So it's gonna copy it to my, uh, copy it to my clipboard and then, you know, paste it. Boom, there's my uh, TS Playground that I wanted to share with my friend. Obviously you can use uh, other URL, URL shorteners, but I think this is pretty great. It has a nice little UI, copies it automatically for you, kind of keeps some history for you as well. Um, so if you're sharing TypeScript Playgrounds with your fellow TypeScript nerd friends, definitely check this out. All right, next cool tool to talk about, let's talk about TypeScript Reset by Matt Pocock. I swear I'm not a Matt Pocock shill, but he keeps coming out with cool stuff and I use it um, so I can speak uh, about this from experience. So we're all familiar with CSS resets if you ever wrote CSS in your life. <laughs> um, it's basically going to provide you with sane defaults. So I use this for this case here specifically. Const filtered array, one, two, undefined filtered Boolean. So the expectation is, is that if you've ever wrote JavaScript, this is going to filter out all the falsy values, which should result in one to two, or in an array that just has one and two. But check this out. If I actually put this in VS Code and we uh, use this cool plugin I just told you about like a minute ago, we see that it's actually gonna be array of number or undefined which is dumb because we know JavaScript is just gonna return us an array of one and two. So what the heck? So the cool thing with this is if I use his reset, it's going to actually give me the type I expect, which is an array of numbers. There's a bunch of other ones that are great as well. This is also a good one. Um, like fetch will typically give you any. This is going to actually uh, give it a type of unknown. So you get a little bit more type safety around there. Uh, I'm not gonna go through this entire readme, but you can kind of scroll down, it's gonna show you all the use cases that it kind of accounts for, and then some other use cases that it doesn't account for with some reasoning around there. Um, it's also cool because you can pick and choose which resets you want specifically. So in my case, if I only care about this one, I can use the reset that only works here. Everything else will do what it typically does in the, in the TypeScript ecosystem. So super awesome, check this out. Install it into your um, projects now, it's gonna save you from a lot of headaches and especially a lot of tedious workarounds as well. All right, let's talk about one more other library that I absolutely love. I believe it's called TS Tool Belt. So if anyone's used TypeScript, probably have if you made this far into the video, TypeScript has its own utility types. So when we think about utility types, um, we kind of think of stuff like this, like awaited, partial, um, extract, exclude, non-nullable, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see that there's there's a limited amount here. There's only, I'm not, I'm not gonna count them, but there's not that many, right? We can see them all right here. So what ends up happening is we end up writing our own custom types to kind of do things that we want. We try to just bend TypeScript to our will because these things aren't built in. So what TS Toolbelt gives you is just basically a huge library of utility types um, that will just make your life easier. And to be honest, I feel like it covers most cases. I think there's some other ones that are um, very similar to this, but this is the one I use. So just to like give you an idea of what I mean here, let's look at an example here. So here's the hello world. Um, this one just says, let's just merge two objects together, object.merge, and then we have our two types, and then it results in string and age, right? Um, and then another one is, let's see, let's make a field of an object optional. Object that optional, here's our type. And we just say we want name, we just want name to be optional. So now you see that it has this little question mark. So you can kind of see it's kind of like low dash effectively um, in a sense um, for your types. Cause obviously 
for these like simple ones, you could probably figure out how to do these yourself. Um, but why, why reinvent the wheel? Just use this library that's been battle tested. Um, and it's just going to save your life and save you time ultimately in the end. So check this out. TS tool belt. All right, that about does it for this video. I just wanted to briefly go over all the tools I currently use. Obviously, I'm a BIM user. So some of these VS Code things I don't use day to day, but when you know when I'm in VIM and I see some crazy type errors, I will switch over and uh, use VS Code just to get some just get get some assistance. Don't don't shame me, okay? It's fine. VS Code is fine, and it makes sense because TypeScript's made by Microsoft, VS Code's made by Microsoft. Why wouldn't it be the best tool if you're using TypeScript? So anyways, hopefully you thought this was helpful. If you have any tools that you use day to day, um, please share them in the comments because I would love to check them out and potentially use them. Anyways, this was fun. Trash out.